This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I will show you how to make variable values dynamic by setting up a configuration file for the package. Then I'll show you how to execute the package under the SQL job agent and provide the variable values via the configuration file. This will allow variable values to be changed without updating the SSIS package. Here I am in Visual Studio, and I want to point out that I am using the package deployment model. So to check that in your package, uh, right mouse click on the project name. And then if this says convert to package deployment model, click on that to convert it to a package deployment model. Uh, I've already done that. So this package already has five variables set up and four of them are used in the connection manager for the connection string. So here you can see the expression that uses the variables server, user ID, password, and DB name. And I'll evaluate the expression and there you can see it has filled in the values that I set up in the variables for those four. And then this is an execute SQL task, and I'm just using it to create a table, and I want to be able to dynamically change the name of the table that gets created. So here I also have an expression set up, and the only variable I use in there is the table name variable. And when I evaluate the expression, you can see it's going to create a table with the name dest1, which is the value I have set up in my variable. All right, so now I right mouse click on the control flow canvas and I select the option package configurations. And if you're not using the package deployment model, you won't be offered that option. So now I check the checkbox here for enable package configurations and then I click on add. And I'll leave the configuration type set to XML configuration file. And then the configuration file name, I want it to be demo config file. And then I'll click on, well, I need to make sure it's going to be saved where I want it saved, and this is the correct folder. So I'll demo config file. And then I'll save it. Then I click on Next, and I'll make this bigger. So I'm only going to dynamically change the database name and the table name. So I can make this smaller, and here we see the variables. So I'll expand the DB name and just select Value. So I just want to change the actual name. And then for table name, I do the same thing. I select value and I'll click on next down here. And there you can see it shows the two properties that I want to um, save in the config file. And it's going to just save the values as I have them set in the variables, the initial values for the variables. And there you can see the location in the folder where I'm going to save it. So then I just click finish and then I close this. Now we'll go take a look at that XML file. And here it is. If I just open it the regular way, it's pretty easy to read here. And you can see the DB name is set to four demos and the table name is set to dest1. So I can't edit it from here, so I'm gonna open it in Notepad. So I'll go here. And this is a lot harder to read, so I'm going to scan and find, here's DB name, and then I'm going to go over to the configured value, and I'm going to change it to create the table in a different database, and I'll call, 
This database is new tutorials. And then I find the table name in here and the value is right here, which is set to dest one and I'm going to call change it to new table. So the idea here is that you can make changes to these variable values without editing the package. You just change them in this config file, this XML file. So I'll save this and close it. Stay tuned to see how to execute the package under the SQL job agent using the configuration file to provide the new variable values. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? Especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus component. Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components, transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. A vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio. Now I'm in Management Studio. So I scroll down to the SQL Server Agent, and then Jobs, and then I right mouse click on Jobs, I select New Job, and I'll name this Demo 1. And then I need to create a step. So I click on New down here, call it Step 1 and the type is SQL Server Integration Services Package. And I leave Run as SQL Server Agent Service Account. And then the package source is going to be the file system. Then I need to go find the package. And it's this one. Let me go make sure I saved the package. Okay. All right, so this is the package I want to execute. And now I can go over to configurations and I need to add that XML file. So I need to find that. And here it is. So I select it and click OK. OK again. And I'm done configuring the job and the step, so I click OK. And there it shows up, Demo 1. I'll right mouse click on that and choose Start Job. All right, it says it was successful. So now in new tutorials in the tables, I'll refresh them and I should see my new table. And there it is. That's the name I set up in the XML file. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.